Ready to go Saturday morning and it's all in. Um, actually, I would say if you took out, if you weren't going to take the time to wire brush everything, cure rust it and paint it like I did, you could probably get this done in two hours. So the auto's back outside because the beam's on, the, the brake pipe's done, the bled. I'm waiting on one thing to be able to put back together again, which is a, um, there was a seat belt clip that was broken in the back, so that's coming from eBay. I've got to pop that in and then get it back in for his MOT. Over there, we've got Malcolm from Car Care playing with the MGB. I'm hoping I'm going to be able to drive that home tonight. Malcolm's old school, he worked on these stuff before, uh, on this stuff before, knows it really, really well. Um, so he's having to fill around with that, see if he can get it running for me today, so I can take that home. And I've got the 106 Rally in, because I don't have a lot of pressing work to do on cars today, which is a really nice position to be in. I've been flat out last few weeks, but the Rally's in. Oh, phone's ringing, might be sales. Uh, phone, uh, rally is in because I've got the decal kit for it. So I said I'm gonna put a kit set on, and I'll put another set on when I paint the car, but it'll be a while before I paint it, so I'll just get the decals on, but I'll get to that phone. I missed it. Um, anyway, so I've got the decal kit for the Peugeot. Like I said, I'm gonna put a set on, and then when it gets a respray, I'll have another set. But for the moment, I'm gonna put these on, do the wheels, and then uh, just enjoy it as it is. Um, so, Wish me luck putting these stickers on. Just gonna give the car a bit of a clean first. So we've got a few on guys. We've got the Peugeot on. We've got the 106 and the Rally bit on. Um, we've got one of the side ticks on the go. And then I've got this long one to do next, which is the one that makes me nervous. Um, I have no doubt this won't be straight by the time I finish it. This isn't a skill set of mine. When it has the full respray, I'll get the graphics guy to come around and put these on, I think. Um, one thing I have spotted with this kit is that the, where is it, the tick for the bonnet should go from the very edge of the light here over to the corner, but you can see I'm short, so I'm wondering if someone's cut it short because it shouldn't be there, that's starting in too far, it should be starting from there, so I'll have to give them a message about that part and see what they want to do about it, if they won't do anything. I might stick it on for the moment and live with it for a bit until, like I say, the full respray is uh, done. Well, Stu's popped down. He's helped me do the long one because I was never going to get it straight otherwise. So not too bad, I don't think. And we've done the other side. Looking good. The only thing I've done is the one on the front here. Because I said it's wrong. It's wrong. It's... um. It's too short, but I think I'm going to stick it on for the moment just so I've got one there and if they won't replace it, fair enough. I can't imagine they're going to ask for this one back. If they do, I'd be surprised. I don't know what they're going to do with it because it's wrong. So I'll probably stick it on for the moment and hope that they send me out a correct one. Um, and they treat me as I'd like to be treated and post me out the correct one that needs to be about an inch longer. But for the moment, I'll stick it there. Everybody who knows these will know that that's wrong for the moment, but... Um, yeah, hopefully they'll send me out another one. I did double check that I haven't put the wrong one on the back. So that was my initial thought, but it, this one would be the wrong way around. It'd be completely wrong, so yeah, I've definitely put the right, wrong, right one there. So see what they come back to me for the moment, I'll stick that on anyway. Well, the MGB's decided to break its fuel pump while it's been in with Malk. So it's all over until we replace the fuel pump. So, uh, unfortunate because I wanted to drive it home tonight, but there you go, that's what old cars do for you, isn't it? I've got the uh, red Yaris in today because the stereo is not doing anything. I've got a replacement one, I watched a quick video on YouTube of how to do things. So first thing I've got to do is pull the trim off the side here, and they say you can do it with your hands, you just got to be gentle, oh there you go ideal now i'm hoping to leave that connected because that's the airbag one i don't want to set anything like that off so if i can leave that connected which i should be by the looks of it be able to do it without having to do that so, so we get the other one this is where i normally ape things and break clips so i've got to be a bit more gentle with it today i bet use both hands a second there you go. She, she's coming she's coming just gotta take your time 
be a bit gentle with them. There you go, out she comes. This is about as far as I watched on the YouTube video, so I probably should have watched a bit more about how to get it out, but uh, I can't imagine it's too complex from here. So, oh yeah, I can see some screws in there. Two in there. And I think there's some down here as well. Let's get cracking on them. Let's try with the right size to fit in this time. Right, we've got it out. Just got to get everything unplugged now so we can get the, the new replacement one in. While it's out, all back in. Um, didn't replace the stereo in the end. <laughs> so it's all back in with the same stereo because what we found is that although the power on off doesn't work, it does actually still work. Um, and the volume works and so forth everything works on it it's literally just the on off but it turns on and off with the ignition so decided with the age of this car 13 year old car I'll sell it as is I'll put a disclaimer to it if someone wants me to put a stereo in I will do I didn't put the other one in because one that does that and also it was slightly different and different colour vents and all that kind of stuff and so I just decided to leave it but if it's a deal breaker obviously it's something we can do so we've got the MOT pass sheet back for the um, Suzuki Alto that I put the rear axle on. Um, so we've got a pass, um, we've got advisories for uh, a suspension arm pin or bush worn but not resulting in excessive movement. The McPherson struck corroded but not seriously weakened offside front and near side front. So that's going to be crustiness on the um, shroud isn't it again, um, which could be cleaned up but not essential. Service brake binding, but not excessively offside front. I think I've probably got a sticky pad there, so I'm going to um, get the wheel off, clean the sliders out, put them back together again. And offside front backing plate fouling disc. So I'll, um, again, I think I noted that actually when I saw it, I forgot to do it. The um, backing disc is pushing up against the disc a bit, so I'll uh, tidy that up. So no mention of corrosion at all on the rear of the car anymore, which is ideal. All that, spending you know, that time with that stone chip and so forth is worthwhile. Um, Obviously, these advisories aren't really worth doing for the price point in the car, and I don't view any of them as being serious. I mean, the suspension struts are working. They've just got corrosion on them, and the bush is a little bit worn, but isn't excessively. So um, no one's going to pay me the big bucks to fix all this stuff for it. And I think for a car of this age, that's a perfectly acceptable pass as far as I'm concerned. 80,000 miles on it, so I'd say I'm going to ask 19.95 for it, I think, on a 2009 80,000 miles of a brand new MOT. So... Um, yeah, we can move on to something else now, which is cleaning it. <laughs> it hasn't had a good clean since it's been in. Obviously, we did the paintwork, so now I need to um, give the interior a clean, give the exterior a clean, get the pictures up for it, and um, hopefully get up in time for the weekend. So I've got this course in. Customer uh, come back complaining she's got a bit of a knocking noise. Started about four or five months ago. So she's got a knocking noise from the front of the car. Um, went down the standard route, I, I drove it, couldn't replicate it at all, I only managed to make it not make a noise once and it was really random, it wasn't associated to any gear or acceleration or movement at all, so checked all the suspension, checked the drive shaft, checked the engine mount, all of that, um, came around the front of the car, did some checks on that and I'll insert the clip as to what we found a second ago, because um, I've already fixed it, so I'll insert that clip now. So you can see it looked like this water bottle was knocking around and when I first drove the car and heard the noise it sounded to me like something in the engine bay was knocking against the bodywork so I'm hoping that's what it was. What happened is someone had previously glued the clip here in and it had fallen out so that was falling forwards and it was able to knock against this quite a lot. So um, I used the soldering iron to sort of melt the clip back in again and then reinforced it with some of this stuff which is actually quite right. It's a powder you put on and then put like a super glue mixture over the top and now there's no movement in the bottle at all, so we'll put it all back together again and take it for a drive and hopefully that's what it was. So it went out with a three month warranty, uh, we're now, I think we may be five months, but at least four months into it. Would you charge anybody for that fix? I've spent probably about, what well, I say, 20 minutes checking the suspension stuff out, jacking up, da 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 da. I've uh, been out for a test drive and it took me about 10 minutes, it took me about five minutes to fix that, it's going to take me about another 10 minutes to put it back again. 
So well, would you charge or would you do that in goodwill because we're in that first sort of six months um, window, although that wasn't broken when it went out. I think what's happened is someone's leaned on it and broken it. Um, yeah, would you charge? Comment down below. I'm interested in whether you guys would charge for this or not. Note the customers had two cars from me. Uh, both sisters have had cars from me bought by the mum. So goodwill or chargeable? So now the Alto's got his fresh MOT ticket. It's time to give her a clean up. Um, we've given the outside a jet wash off but we're gonna give it a machine polish because we've got the new paint on the bumpers here and obviously get through the interior, which has got lots of mold on. And I am gonna give you a review of that G101, which I promised the other day and forgot to and lost the clip for it. So let's get cracking on that. I'll do this with an audience. Scotty's in today. What are you doing today, Scotty? I'm sanding this, but I think I might need some sun cream. Is it an Alpha 75 airbox? Yeah, it's the, uh, yeah, that's where the airfield goes, there's the other half of it. There you go. So we'll come back to Scotty later and see how much work he actually gets done in the sunshine. But anyway, let's crack on. I'm sure he'll tell me where I've missed a bit. Scotty and I get on particularly well because we have the same love of old school dance tunes. Being a Friday, we'll be putting them on nice and loud while I get on with this. Unfortunately, obviously, due to licensing, I won't be able to have that in the background for those of you who also like old school dance. Anyway, let's crack on. Right now it's had a hoover out, you can see there's a lot of old grime and stuff in the plastics here. It's all a bit grimy. Overall the actual fabrics and that are in good nick and the carpets are in good nick. It's just a lot of grime on it and we've got a lot of this where the car's been sitting, it's got a little bit of moisture in the seats and come out with a bit of bacteria that's created a little bit of mouldy stuff. Now I said I was going to do a review for you, an honest review for you on the G101 um, I got from Autosmart, which I did actually do, but I've lost the footage on it, so we'll do it on this car instead. So I'm going to be cheeky, I'm just going to cover everything in it. I'm going to put it on the fabrics, I'm going to put it on the plastics, and we're going to see what results we get from it. Um, see if it lifts out this mould. I'm going to use this brush for the plastics. I'm going to use a, a different brush for the seats um, to try and agitate it and bring it out. But we'll see how we get on with it. Because if I can use one cleaner on all the interior, it's going to save me a huge amount of time swapping out cloths and different stuff. If it doesn't bring up enough of a shine on it, I'll use a plastic cleaner, you know, that leaves a bit of a shine on it for that at the end. But we'll see how we get on with all the rest of it first.
that you love the manufacturers that actually make air filters accessible I said this but I haven't actually got round to taking this one out yet so we'll see how accessible it is <laughs> Air filter doesn't look too bad, looks like it's been well looked after this little uh, Alto. But we'll stick a new one in anyway, of course. Right guys, so the Alto's all done, all polished up, she's had a photo shoot, she's got new wheel trims, all the bodywork's been polished up, she's got a brand new MOT on her, all set to go. Um, as regards the G101, let's have a quick look inside, I just noticed I missed a spot, I'm going to have to redo again, um, but overall it's come up well, all the moulds gone. Well, the dash is nice and clean. It's got enough machine on it for me. I'm happy enough with that. All well, the back seats are clean. All the seat belts are now clean. All well, the seats have come up in good condition. So for me, the G101 is a win because I've been able to clean the entire interior with just that. And it's given the, the plastics enough of a shine, sort of a matte shine to keep me happy. But I've been able to use it on the fabric as well. So yeah, I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that's a win. I'm happy with that. And yeah, she's come up really nice. Look in the engine bay. I used the G101 on the engine bay as well. Um, used that to give it a bit of a clean up and I'd say that's come up nice as well. All nice and clean. She runs like a little sewing machine. Let me start her up for you. Uh, battery's a bit low on the camera, so I may have to switch to my phone in a second. Yeah, but a little three cylinder. Runs like a sewing machine. No tension or noises. Um, no rattles or knocks. She just sits there ticking over nicely. Really nicely. Really quiet. So that side of things looks good. I'll do an oil and filter change on her as well uh, before she goes out for sale. The only thing I've noticed cleaning her that got uh, missed is that the uh, a couple of things, both regarding the boot. Now the boot release works there, but it doesn't work on the key, so I don't know if the lock's damaged. And also, the boot struts the boots drop in if they go right the way up they hold but that's just a safety thing for me if that drops on someone's head I'm in big trouble so I'll get some new struts for it as well for the boot but uh, other than that I'm quite happy with how she's come up I mean we know the color match is never going to be perfect but it looks a hell of a lot better than everything being orange and the bumpers being pink um, overall the rest of the body works actually in good condition like I say, this will be 1995. I might try it 2195. I don't know. Probably 1995 is where it needs to be. But I reckon for that money, with a fresh MOT on it, uh, all that back axle work I did, you know, I spent the time to get it proper cleaned up, so it wasn't even mentioned in the MOT. Um, that's going to do someone well. That it's going to be cheap on insurance. It's going to be good on fuel, low on road tax, and yeah, should be a nice little bomb around for someone. So fingers crossed, it goes to a good home. Like I say, I'm not going to make fortunes off of it. My total investment in it, well, I'll go through that in a minute. I'll go through the spreadsheet with you, actually, and go through everything that we've spent on this so you know exactly where we are with it. But hopefully you guys think that I did a good job on it and you think that it's a decent car and that it's a fair price. And, um, I mean, these, I say all these tyres are flipping fantastic. It's got brand new tyres all round on it as well. So, um, yeah, good little car for someone, I'd say. Like I say, it runs super quietly. Right, let's go for the numbers. Where we are numbers wise with it, it was £808 from, let's get something nicer for you to point with, £808 
from BCA delivery was £110. Uh, I've allocated a percentage of the insurance and marketing costs on the um, fixed price platforms I use. I've got the paint from Marlowe, £73. The MOT, £40. got a battery, crash sensor, share of the, the cleaning products from AutoSmart. got the rear axle that I got in, uh, the stone chip. Um, uh, I can delete that. I've got a second share of auto smarts. Let's take that out a second. These things happen sometimes. Let's delete that. There we go. Uh, I've got some epoxy. I think I used to clean up some little holes in the backing plate. Just to tidy them up again. I spoke to the MOT guy. They weren't essential. Just tidied them up a bit. Uh, I've got the seat belt. A clip that was broken that failed on the MOT. got new wiper blades, which is one thing it did need for the MOT. And the other two crash sensors. So my total costs are thirteen seventy six, with twenty four pound being able to claim back in VAT. If I sell it at nineteen ninety five, um, my true margin is six hundred and eighty pounds. That's what I call my margin for costs and um, versus sale price. But my gross margin to the VAT man is a thousand pounds. So I have to pay him two hundred pounds in VAT, two hundred fifteen pounds. And my true net is four hundred and three pounds plus what I came back off of the uh, off the VAT. So four hundred and twenty four pounds. Um, I'll put a warranty on it, it cost me about 80 quid. So let's say the true profit's going to probably be in around about the 350 pound mark, which I suppose isn't bad for initial investment of uh, uh, you know, 900 and, or 808 pounds for the car. Um, on my actual spend of 1300 pounds, it's going to be about 20%, which is about right, I suppose, isn't it, for selling cars? So it's not outrageous, it's just the amount of time and effort put into it probably doesn't add up for that kind of return, but. Not going to lose money on it hopefully even if we have to fire sell it at like 16.95 something like that so big news guys for my business and for the channel i guess uh we had a visit from the landlord uh this week many of you know i share the unit with uh alpha regazzi stuart alpha regazzi we've been friends for a long time had a unit together that we shared and then when he moved into into barnstable here I had storage space off him when I started the business. Stuart offered to allow me to sell cars out the front of his um, and use some workshop space on a sort of profit share basis. Uh, but the landlord's come along and said, we can't sell cars here. Not allowed to sell cars here. Um, she doesn't want any car sales business here. In fact, she doesn't really want garages here, to be honest. Um, but yes, doesn't want car sales. We've, uh, we were officially never sort of allowed to sell cars. That's why they never had prices in the screens. We sold everything online, um, but she kind of turned a blind eye to it, but she's decided that um, enough is enough and doesn't want to sell in cars here anymore. So it means I need to find new space, a new unit um, to sell from. This was never ideal because at the end of the day I only ever had space for about eight cars um, which obviously you can't really build a, a, a decent income off of eight cars you need much more space than that um, but I do love the environment around here I've got the car care guys which are absolutely brilliant love those guys get on really well with them got the um, MPD lot for my parts over the road they're brilliant love them guys uh, got Lee obviously Barham Engineering Barm engine, sorry, I always get that wrong. Um, great guys, great help. I can get my engine work done there. I can get my parts there. I can get additional help with mechanical stuff here. And everyone is always happy to give you advice. A few of them have freed up space for me every now and then. MPD guys, let me use a jet wash over there, bay. This is a brilliant environment to be in. Um, and I'd be absolutely gutted to have to move away from it, to be honest. But them's the brakes um, and like I say I guess at the end of the day um, unless the whole interior space had been dedicated to car sales it was never going to be big enough to do the kind of volume that was needed so there's going to be a change so I need to find new premises now being in Devon um, a lot of premises change hands just on the shake of a hand um, uh, you never really see them on the main site so I put a good few feelers out there with people looking out for stuff but if anybody in the sort of Devon area here's a link do let me know hit me up with a comment below or you can bung me an email um, what do I want what am I looking for in a new place well obviously I'm looking for enough space either inside or outside to have you know sort of at least 20 20 cars um, in an ideal world I want to carry on doing some of the work on the cars myself so I want enough room for a ramp 
um, but the interior space really doesn't need to be big enough more you know any bigger than room for maybe a couple of cars with a ramp and a, an office and the rest could be exterior space or the opposite could be true it could be a place that's entirely interior space but um, like an industrial unit somewhere maybe and I keep all the cars inside at least I keep them nice and clean I mean this was never perfect either because you've got the scrap yard opposite and all the dust blows over the cars so they've been clean this morning but I guarantee you by sort of Monday afternoon they'll be lagged again in dust so um, I don't mind being out in the sticks a bit you get some better deals out there because most of the stuff sells online I think if you price keenly they'll come out and and see you there but yeah it's um it's a change but to expand the business it was a change that was going to have to happen anyway we're just being pushed a bit earlier so um yeah that's the big news on the front of the uh of the uh, units and uh, needing new premises not being able to sell cars which is a challenge when that's what you what you're doing um we're lucky the landlord hasn't sort of said right you need to sell, stop right now um she said you need to basically ramp it down and um and move away from that side of the business which you know is fair it's not being tough like that um and like i say the unit was never let to stuart on the basis that he would be doing car sales it was on the basis of doing restoration and service work so um that's what it is it is what it is but sir uh, all we can do at the moment is crack on and carry on with the cars we've got um finish those off get them sold and and uh, look out for a unit